just want to see how my lighting looks. joy and welcome to my youtube channel i am an actress writer and founder of blue room productions i post vlogs behind the scenes commentary on my projects and my films but before this video is over make sure you hit the like subscribe and the bell button to stay up to date so in today's video i wanted to talk to you about the Vol chronicles collaboration and how spike lee inspired this project after Behind the Silence, I had told myself, hmm? so after making my second short film, Behind the Silence, I told myself that I was going to take a break. I was going to chill. I had went through so much trying to make that project and I wanted to just take a break. That is not what happened. A few months after wrapping Behind the Silence, maybe not even a few months, but after a very short time after wrapping Behind the Silence, I was sitting with my producer, Sam George, and we were just having a conversation just about life. There was this, I don't know, there was just this, this magic that was kind of happening there. And we thought, you know what, let's make another project. And I thought to myself, are we crazy? <laughs> Am I crazy? I just wrapped like maybe two months ago on Behind the Silence, and here I am talking about making another project. I thought I was crazy, but if anything, I was just inspired. So originally, The Wolf Chronicles was about two friends, and one of them was visiting from living in New York City. And she had noticed all of the changes that were happening in the city, and she wasn't happy with them. So it was very much inspired by me because I would come home from New York and everything would look so different. And I'm just thinking to myself, Chicago is really changing. So I wanted to incorporate that thought, that opinion in the script. So I wrote The Woe Chronicles because I wanted to offset the negative press that Chicago gets. Every single time I told someone I was from Chicago they always followed up with the, is it really that violent? Is it really that bad? Chirac. And they would say all of these things to really put Chicago in a really bad light. And it bothered me because even though I'm from the suburbs, all of my family is from the city. Majority of them is either from the South or from the city. I spent so much of my time and my childhood in Chicago. So that's my home. Period. Chicago is my home. It's honestly in my backyard. So I remember telling Sam, like, this is why I really want to make this film. Yes, it's about these two women, their friendship. They're having this great conversation about different types of things. But I really want to take the time to show just different parts of the city that are really beautiful and artistic. Because the city really has a lot of those spaces. It has a great artistic community. Location scouting was a lot of fun. We went to different parts of the city that we really liked and just found these really cool backdrops and and um, and murals. We took pictures around the city and we enjoyed ourselves. Just enjoyed exploring Chicago, which is exactly what we did. I like taking pictures. <laughs> if I was not a filmmaker or an actress, I would be a photographer. I just think it's another way to tell a story. The journey to the Woe Chronicles did come with a few hiccups. After I wrote the script, after we locked down our locations, we started looking for the other actress to play in this project. So we had auditions. It was a very smooth process and we did decide on a particular actress. Now being that this project had such a low budget, I was not able to pay my actor. And I have always done my best to make sure that everyone is paid. Honestly, the funds were not there to pay an actor or even pay myself. I was still trying to recover from making my second short film that cost me $5,000. 
So I unfortunately was unable to pay an actor and I felt really bad about that because I don't want anyone working for free. I still had to spend a certain amount of money. I set my budget. It was way low. Like, I think it was around the same budget as Crumble was, which was between six and eight hundred dollars. And that money goes fast. You'll be surprised at how quickly money can go. You'll be really surprised about that. So we have our auditions. We find the actor. We're two weeks out from shooting. We have everything is locked. Equipment, cast, crew, location, the story, everything is locked. The actress decides to pull out because we were not paying her. It was, and I, I understand, I completely understand that you want to get paid for whatever you bring to the table. I will never fight you about getting paid because I get it. I put in a lot of energy and a lot of effort and have invested a lot of my time into my work. So I want to get paid for it. But I honestly did not have the money. I did feel really bad about not being able to pay her or even myself because I deserve to get paid too. But I, I didn't. I was not, it wasn't that I was so much upset. I was aggravated because she was aware of the terms and conditions before she said yes. It was put in the casting notice. It was emphasized in the audition room. And then it was emphasized again when she got the part. She agreed to everything. She understood there wasn't any money in the budget to get paid. She was okay with that. So I'm not for sure what happened. Maybe she sat and thought about it. Now, mind you, this actress had zero credits. She had no credits. And that's not to take away from the fact that she did not deserve to get paid because she did. But it's obvious that you're at the beginning of your career. But that's neither here nor there. You know, regardless, she had her reasons and that's okay with it. I talked about this in previous episodes where I said there are things that are going to happen the week of a few weeks before shooting that you would not have been able to have thought of, that you couldn't prepare for. I was not prepared for that actress to pull out. We were not, we honestly were not prepared for that. And we didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. I had thought that because we had communicated clearly with the actress about payment, that everything was okay. Time and time again, I have learned that through so many lessons that you honestly cannot control what other people do. Being that this was not the first time I had someone pull out, it was just like, you know what? The show must go on. And we ended up shooting it anyway. And I'm so happy that we did that because we really came out with a really nice project. Me and Sam didn't want to waste, you know, our crew or our location or even the story we had an opportunity to shoot something and we had everything already checked out. So I was like, I'll just rewrite the script. And once again, we were able to go within ourselves and figure out a story that would fit the environment and would make sense for us. And Sam added to that story. She added a great element to that story. So we were able to use ourselves and really create this truthful experience of a young woman living in the city. It was based off of real experiences that both her and I have had. And I think that's what made The Well Chronicle so special was because it was personal. I think that's the best way to honestly connect with your audience is use yourself as a muse. You don't have to go outside of yourself to find inspiration. All the stories that you need are honestly right here within you. You just have to pay attention and look. And so many of us get distracted by what everyone else is doing that we ignore what's going on inside of us. We ignore that, that inner creativity that is already built in, that is already there because we think because because we're comparing ourselves to other people. I can inspire myself because I can look within and look at my own life and my own past and just my own environment and find a story from that. I think that's the best way to go about writing your stories is how 
can I make this about me? How can I make these characters or how can I use myself? How can I give my characters my problems? How can I infuse my environment with my personality in the script? All of the pieces fit together so perfectly. I played the main part, Kendra. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. You just gotta go watch it. On this set, we only had five people. Me, the cinematographer, the sound person, the assistant, and Sam. That was it. My favorite part of the Woe Chronicles was the photo inserts because that's what I believe made this project stand out. The idea was based off of Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It, the movie. But there's a particular scene in the movie where the main character, um, one of the guys is on the train. And the way to capture the movement of the train, Spike inserted photos. And you could tell that like that is how he made the scene move forward. It was the dopest thing. I thought it was the coolest thing, the coolest idea to insert photography. And in all honesty, I have an obsession with photography. I think that photography's photography. I think photography is nothing but a movie in still motion. And I felt that with those photo inserts of She's Gotta Have It with that guy on the train, Spike did an excellent job of moving the scene forward, but being completely just different and thinking outside of the box. And I really liked that idea. And I'm like, Sam, look at these really cool photo inserts that Spike Lee did. When I showed her, she was just as impressed as I was. So she was like, I know a way that we can build upon that. She had shown me these really cool collages and how she had took pictures to make one big picture. That's exactly what we did. And I was just, and still am to this day, in love with that idea. I love The Woe Chronicles so much because once again, we had to figure out how to work with our limitations and not against them. We could have easily buckled when the actress pulled out, but we didn't. We said, we're gonna figure this out. We've been through worse because we had. <laughs> we had been through worse and we figured it out. I mean, from beginning to end, this project was so much fun to make because me and Sam really allowed ourselves to just explore and think outside of the box and really be artistic. It was such a cool and relaxed set. And everyone was really laid back, but yet they were adding, they were helping, they were giving ideas. You know, there was no egos on set. It just made for such a smooth set and such a smooth shooting time. Another thing that added to the story was I was actually having a hormonal breakout when we were shooting. If you, you know, in the bathroom, I was dabbing on this pimple. That was not makeup. That was a real pimple. And so I remember talking to Sam about it and I was like, I'm feeling a little subconscious about this pimple. You know, it's really big and it's all you can see. And she was like, just add it to the story, add it to your character. How would you feel if you were about to head out somewhere or go somewhere or you're getting ready to go somewhere? How would you feel if you had this massive pimple on your face? That was, a, that was another moment that felt very natural to me because I was able to use that pimple in the story, even though it was not. And I'm sure I was overthinking it, you know, being self-conscious, which I was because I used to have really bad acne you have to look at how do all of the elements aid to your project? How does the environment, the sound, the lighting, the costumes, how does, and so much more, how do all of these things help with your story? How does it make your character's environment richer? How does it make your character's environment more fulfilling? That's what I enjoyed a lot, is I really enjoyed those little nuances. I really enjoyed figuring out those little pieces they all add to the bigger picture of your story. There was so much intention put in with both my second and my third short film. And understanding why intention is so imperative to a story is something that I learned on those sets. That was my first time being half naked on camera. <laughs> sure was. 
so much of this and so much of filmmaking and art just starts by really playing. And you don't need permission to play. You don't need to be five years old to play. Um, you just really need to have the curiosity to play and experiment to, you know, because that's what gets you thinking outside the box. It's also just kind of the foundation of filmmaking. It's the foundation of art. Like, let's just see what happen. It's the f happens. It's the fun part of this job that we get to do. And it can be really frustrating, especially if you're like, oh, we were supposed to get this shot two hours ago and <laughs> we're running behind. Um, but it's like, once you figure out, it's, it's almost like the amount of smiles on people's faces. You're like, oh, that's really cool. I didn't know we could do that. What else can we do? Oh, this gives me an idea for something else I want to try later. Um, so it's, it's incredibly important, not just to experiment, you know, which leads to thinking outside the box, but it's incredibly important to just play. So you don't know what something is gonna look like. Um, you might be like, let's just throw money at it, let's throw money at it, and sure, you could throw money at it, but sometimes it's also kind of a lazy response to an easy way out almost, but I really would love to see storytellers and their work, the risks they're taking, really being highlighted. You know, like right now we tend to have a tendency to showcase and glorify and be excited about um, big name directors and filmmakers that we know. And that's totally fine and understandable and that's gonna happen obviously. Like you wanna keep up with your favorites. But I do hope that in terms of evolving, it's not necessarily even the storytellers themselves, but it is the way that we find them and the way that we find each other and the way that we support each other. Um, we tend to fall into these camps sometimes and to these trends sometimes of who we support or who gets supported. And, you know, there's always going to be an underdog, of course, and y you try your best, communities try their best, I think, to highlight everybody. Those who are in that stage of having not yet broken through yet or found themselves yet, having still access to showcasing the stories they want to tell and finding maybe those mentors or people who support them and support their work in a way that they're going to figure out together how to make it happen. Being the optimistic person I am and wanting to love for everybody, um, I think showcasing those skills and highlighting those skills and making those networks even stronger is really what I would like to see and how I'd like to see that evolve. And we're doing a good job. Like we've, we've made progress and we've made strides and um, it's definitely happening. So in terms of storytelling and involvement, I think more of those platforms or just more of the getting out there, more of the, the not even advertisement, but showcasing those voices that maybe still need to be worked on, but there's something there. Like whatever that community is that needs to happen, I would love to see it because there's so many people who are so close but then they give up because they feel like they haven't had that moment where their voice is heard or they're still crafting their voice. And maybe that's what I'd like to see too, is hear a little bit more of a like failing story. <laughs> I wanna hear people who failed and then succeeded, um, something I can relate to. And I think particularly with the Woe Chronicles, um, I, I very much appreciated that experience of being a director. It taught me a lot of things in the sense of, okay, what do I know? Well, I know and understand references to things. You know, one of my favorite references in there was um, this homage almost to to Cubism photography and to Spike Lee's She's Got a Habit. That's going to have a special place in my heart because I do think given the circumstances of, oh gosh, what was it, one or two days and a very short crew and, or small crew and no budget that we were able to make a really pretty strong mumblecore short film. You know, there's, like I said, there was a very, there's a strong aesthetic to it. There's a, there's a clear story through it, which I really, really appreciate. I think it's just realizing that it is incredibly important to put limitations on yourself. And people might disagree with that. And they're just like, no, the more money, the better. And true, for some things you're gonna need more money for. But I think when it comes to the heart of just telling a story, when you give yourself those boundaries, you figure out how to make them work you know, and give yourself enough time, hopefully, or on the fly, hopefully. I think that's really where creativity and art and, you know, being a filmmaker, that all kind of comes together and creates something really, really beautiful. In this day and age, a lot of people showcase things in film festivals and showcase things immediately online, and those are beautiful things, and we also did that, but we literally rented out a gallery space and invited people to it, and we're like, all right, this is us. We're filmmakers, we're artists, let's just see what happens. Going back to experimenting and having fun, let's just 
Let's play. Let's see what happens. Let's showcase our stuff for the world to see. And the day that it happened, we just got to walk away from it because it was no one else's work. It's no just simple like or love or like a comment. Like we opened it up to the public and we got a really, really good response. So to me, it, it's more than just the story. It's going to be the experiment experience that sticks with me for a very, very long time, if not forever. Actually forever. It'll stick with me forever. Okay, guys. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe, like, and the bell button below. And do not forget to follow me on all social media platforms. I will see you next week.